Yes, I got this shirt that you just saw in South Dakota. I was there a couple months ago. Notice here I got the Brooklyn hat. This is now season two, folks. It's still number eight. I don't want to call it uh, episode one. I just keep on going. So it's number eight, series two of hats. The Hat Man Cometh. Uh, the Hat Man. The Hat Man rises again. Revenge of the Hat, Return of the Hat, Lord of the Hats, Dark Gun Lights, The Gandalf of the Hats, Game of Thrones of Hats, Vikings Hats, The Game of Thrones of Hats, The Viking Hats. Uh, another show I like to watch called The uh, Last Kingdom of Hats. Yeah, The Last Kingdom. That's another good show about the uh, early days of the Vikings invading England. And a guy named U U Utred. Utred. Interesting name. Anyways, this hat is known as the Brook. I call it the Brooklyn Dodgers hat. Also, I call it the Jewish hat. Then I got the Jewish flag. And the American flag on it. Let's see a little bit more. You can see that better. Yeah. See Brooklyn on it. it. Says New York on the side. This is pretty neat. You see the words NY. New York there too. And uh, I think that's pretty much what you see on the hat. Yeah. Anyways. Brooklyn is the highest population of Jewish people in the United States. Now, you could say, wait a minute, what about New York City? Manhattan, other parts of the United States. Well, of course there's Jewish people everywhere in the United States. I'm not saying that there isn't. The biggest population of Jewish people in this country is right smack in the middle of Brooklyn. Why? People would say, why Brooklyn? Well, obviously it has something to do with why they like it. Maybe it's very similar to the to what they remembered when they used to live in ancient Israel. It's very humid. It's close to the ocean. It's not, well, maybe it's not that close, but it's close enough. It's humid over there. I guess it's, it's a good place to make soft bread. Jewish people are known to be make good bread. You know, garlic, you know, the whole idea of garlic bread. Well, where, where did garlic came from? It didn't come from the Italians, folks. The Italians got garlic, believe it or not, from the Jewish people. The ancient Israelites used garlic, believe it or not, they really did. During King David's time and before, all the way back to Abraham, these people used garlic in their food, and also when it comes to medicinal purposes, they use garlic. Garlic's known to help your blood, your blood, clean your blood out, or your cholesterol. It's also good for uh, health benefits, like if you have scar, if you, have a, if you hurt yourself, like uh, any scabs or any, any scars or injuries, they put garlic on it. Now that seems kind of strange to people like us. Darn lights. This is very unkosher. Very uncash food of you lights. That's very un-Jewish. That's better. That's a lot better. That's a lot more kosher about these lights now. Anyways. Garlic was used by Jewish people for over 2,000 years, folks. They used it before the Italians ever did. In fact, the Italians got the idea of garlic from the Jewish community when they were dispersed by the Romans. When the Romans invaded Israel, they also took the, their the eating ideas into Italy and to Rome. Now, I went, okay, people were saying, okay, if that's true, then what did the Italians invent? Well, they did not invent pasta either. The idea of noodles and pasta did not come from Italy. It really came from China, folks. The Asian people ate noodles, ate uh, forms of pasta that, that 
predate Italy and the Italian people. So when you think about pasta, you usually think about China. You think about garlic, think about Israel. You put both the garlic and the pasta together, you get Italy. The Italians adopted, just like the Romans did, customs and cultures of different food of different countries together. Put it together into some in an interesting concoction, and what do you get? Lasagna, spaghetti, ziti, uh, all kinds of pasta, antipasta. There's even seafood. They put pasta and seafood together too. Calamari. They like to eat that with some some kinds of, sometimes spaghetti. It tastes good with calamari. Now spaghetti was an Italian invention. We hear the words Eddie. And with an I, that's very commonly known to be Italian. Now, bologna, bologna, that's not Italian, folks. You'd think it would be, but it's not. Bologna, bologna, as we like to call it in America, bologna, people say other people say bologna in, other, in Italy, in other countries. Really came from the crowds. Yes, you betcha. The Germans, the Deutsch. They had bologna. Bologna, some people like to say Bologna, or Bologna, but the G, I think, is apparently silent when it's, when it's pronounced. I used to call it Bologna, but I come from a people that can't pronounce English worth a shit. I mean, you go to the Midwest, all you hear is people going, oh, jeez, oof, da, yeah, sure, sure, you betcha. Yeah, sure, yeah, betcha. It means you're not really even sure. Are you, are you not? I don't know. But see, people in the Midwest can't speak worse shit. We know we can't. We admit it, we're horrible speakers. And the reason why, because our ancestry came from a place that didn't speak or know English. Now, you got people in the, in the Midwest that are English people. Yes. You darn lights. Oh, jeez. Who've done this? Stupid lights. Here we go. Anyways, the Midwest is predominantly mostly Scandinavian people. Minneapolis has got the highest rate, highest population of Norwegians outside of Norway, and in, in, right there in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I think the highest population of Norwegians speaking Norwegians are actually in North Dakota. I've got family from all, all areas of the Midwest. From South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, uh, Utah, what's that other one? Iowa, yep, got family in Iowa too. Got the history there too. Anyway, I kind of rooted a little bit, put too far in what I was trying to say. But anyways, the reason why I'm wearing a South Dakota shirt And a, a Brooklyn a Brooklyn hat, actually I call it a Jewish hat, a Jewish American Brooklyn hat, and a South Dakota shirt. Why I'm doing this? Because Jewish people and Indigenous people and Native Americans both went through a Holocaust, went through a cultural genocide because of empire or military might and, and strength. Well, the Jewish people have been persecuted for over 2,000 years. They'll say, how is that possible? They were persecuted for 3,000 years? Wait a minute. Well, they were. You read the Bible, it says in the Bible that Jewish people were persecuted. The Romans persecuted them, the Assyrians persecuted them, the Phoenicians, the Philistines, the Persians, of course, we call them the Iranians. Back then, the Greeks called them Persians. But really, the real land was not called Persia. That's a Greek word. The real land was called Avestan, which comes from the sacred scriptures of called the Avesta. Well, that's how we probably pronounce it in America. They probably pronounce it Avesta, a long A. And, anyways, the Jewish people have been persecuted for that long. And Christians persecuted them. Now that mind boggles my mind. Why would Christians persecute the very people whom they worship happens to be Jewish? They're Messiah. You know, Jesus Christ. People say Yeshua. 
Yehoshua, as they say in Israel. The Messianic believers in Israel say Yehoshua. In America, they shorten it and say Yeshua. But it's the same name. Jesus is not anything but, it's not a pagan name. As Nisanics like to claim, Jesus was widely used ever since England existed, and English language, English language existed. Anyways, that's why I'm wearing this shirt and this hat. I don't have any Jewish in my, in my background, folks, I don't. But also things that Jewish people contributed was pastrami and corned beef. Corned beef does not come from the Irish. It's not something the Irish invented on St. Patrick's Day. Corned beef came from the Jewish people. So did pastrami, too, believe it or not. Pastrami did not come from the Italians. It didn't come from Rome or Italy. It came from Jewish people. So we eat a Reuben sandwich, or a pastrami sandwich. Think Jewish people. Think Israel. Think about Jewish Americans. Because Jewish Americans were the ones that came up with the idea of corned beef, pastrami, and all the spices we like to use, like garlic. We eat garlic, you're eating a Jewish spice that's been used for over 3,000 years. Even before Christ, Jewish people were using garlic. They ate olives and garlic. In fact, they actually dipped olives in garlic. And sometimes they mashed the olives and put it in with the garlic. Part of Passover, believe it or not, folks, Pesach, as they say in Hebrew, Passover. One of the spices that is used is garlic because it's got a very pungent taste, a very strong taste. There was no horseradish back then. People use horseradish today for Passover. But garlic was original, one of the herbs that was used. And remembering the bitterness of slavery, the bitterness of tyranny and persecution. So when you think about Jewish people, when you think about indigenous people, as you see in this picture, remember that these folks are also your neighbors. And remember that these people should be treated with respect, with love and dignity, and self-dignity, and also understanding, compassion, love, mercy, all the good things you think about you would do to your own family and your kids. Do it unto them too. If you got any Jewish neighbors, then be nice, be kind. If you got any indigenous neighbors, neighbors from the tribes or close to a reservation, go over there and actually say, you know something, I love you and your culture, I love your food. Uh, I really enjoy the fact that you got so much beautiful music. Because Jewish people and Native American people have got such great food and great culture, great music. They've contributed greatly to this country. This country would not exist was it not for a Jewish banker. There was a banker that actually helped finance the War of Independence, folks. Yes, the guy that actually financed the war to make this country independent, free from Britain, was a Jewish darn lights. This is so unkosher. It was a Jewish banker that helped our country become free. Remember that, folks. A Jewish banker, literally a Jewish banker, an accountant, financially saved this country, made it free from British and English tyranny. And these folks, too. When you say freedom, you say a native. You say indigenous. When you say freedom, you say Jewish Americans. When you say freedom, you speak about people who are willing to die, sacrifice their lives for this country, or any country. Patriotism isn't evil, folks. Being patriotic is nothing diabolical. Unless you're doing it to hurt and harm other people, then yes, it would be. If it supports the idea of a war,